Yo, what's up, party people? This is uh, Samaj Marsh at BlueDeathValley.com. Today I'm flying solo, but actually I have a very special guest in the building, live from the ANT practice field. Uh, one of the most underrated players in the entire nation, in my opinion. None other than my main man, Corey Banks. What's up, Corey? How are you doing? Man, I'm doing great, man. I'm living the dream. Hey, so tell me, how's uh, camp, real quick, how's camp going so far? Um, man, it's going pretty good, man. Um, you know, just getting back into the flow of things. You know, having that year off after COVID, just getting back into the flow of things. And, you know, we're just ready to play in two weeks. In two weeks, man. I can't believe it, man. We've been we've been having some serious withdrawal right. pains the whole right. time. Like, really. <laughs> yeah, definitely, man. So it's been a long time. So how ha how tough has it been to like navigate those new COVID policies, and how has that been going as far as the, the the camp been going? Um, I won't say it's tough. You know, it's just it takes a little more um maturity, I would say. You know, uh, to understand you got to wear your mask. Um, even around your friends. Around everybody, you just gotta wear your mask and, and try to keep the team safe. So it just take a little bit more maturity, and you know. Gotcha. Well, are you pretty confident you guys have you know done as much as y'all can do to put yourself in position to be ready to you know play football? Oh, oh yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely. I think um, come time to play, we'll yeah, we definitely ready. Gotcha. Well, as far as football goes, man, like I, I made a little joke on social media. I said with the whole uh, name, image, and licensing, uh, licensing uh, rules with the NCAA, I said you should go out there and get a marketing deal with Matches Firm. <laughs> hey, yeah, I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> because folks have, since you got here, have been sleeping on your skills. I don't understand it. To me, it's almost criminal. Um, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess because you're like a jack of all trades. People don't really kind of focus on one particular thing. Maybe that maybe that's working against you. Yeah. But but do you? Let me ask you a question. Do you feel a little bit overlooked sometimes? I mean, definitely. Like I know when I step on the field, like that, I feel like I'm the best out there. So definitely, I feel overlooked. But that's why that's why I get two in two weeks. I get to go out there and, and show everybody why I feel overlooked and, and and why I feel like they should look at me a little more. Yeah, it was, I mean, I, I couldn't believe with the even with the preseason, you know, watch list and all conference stuff, your name wasn't first team. And I mean, let's, let me roll off some stats real quick, right? Uh, last year, first year at a t you had 34 catches for 470 yards and four touchdowns, right? Mm -hmm. and, and no one even knew who you were before before the first game. You came out there and like dominated from from Jump Street. Actually, I remember seeing you in fall camp. And you were doing a lot of uh, like jet sweeps. You're kind of like the H back or the slot guy. Uh -huh. and that then, was kind of my role last year. Right, you right. Know, and come in and you know, jet sweep. You know, the immediate routes get the ball to me quick. So I, I played my role. But in that season opener, we had a couple guys out, and you got thrown into the you know outside wide wideout position against Elon. Um, and I mean, you didn't miss a beat. Uh, that's that's when I saw. I think this guy is a, is a weapon. You were going out making some. <laughs> Sideline, toe tap, drag catches. You know, yes, <laughs> you went deep um, against that secondary line. And actually, people don't remember, but you almost caught the game winning touchdown in the end zone right, right man, before, I, right before the kick. I okay. want that play back, man. I, I want it back, that. I thought I, I thought I got the foot in, but I, I didn't when I rewatched it. But. Yeah, yeah, it was close though. <laughs> it, I mean, it was, like that, it was that close, right, yeah. right. And then the next week, you still had some guys out. Um, and you were still uh, playing outside receiver, um, and you went to Duke, and you had one of the biggest catches in the game against the, the Blue Devils. And I mm -hmm. think that was pretty much uh, – that answered any questions about could you dominate at this level? I mean, somewhat. That was just one little catch. Um, I feel like I still got a lot to show and a lot to prove. Like, I, I understand why some people sleep on me, but after this year, I, I think they'll open their eyes. Right, right. And so listen, let me just, I know you're a humble guy, so let me give you a couple more stats. You had five uh, runs last year for 57 yards. You were second, I believe, in the conference in, uh, in, in punt return yardage, or punt yeah. return average, and you, had, you were like second in, in, in combined kicks and punt return. So you did some special teams. You ran the ball. You caught the ball. Um, people still don't want to give you credit. But and let me ask you this: How'd you even wind up at AT? Because uh, I know you started off at South Carolina. How'd you How'd you get here? So, um, in a mist, 
long story short, I went to South Carolina 2016. Um, I played in some games. That receiver had a catch, a couple catches. Um, my sophomore year, I ended up getting eligible that spring. Um, so with me being eligible, they ended up moving me to DB. I had to miss the whole 2017 season because I was ineligible. Mm. Then when I came back, to, when I came back 2018, I was at DB. So uh, probably after about the fourth, fifth game, I just felt like it that wasn't the place for me anymore, and and I got out of there. So I, I put my name in the portal. That's when the portal was brand new. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, man, I had to do it. I went to go put my name in the portal. Um, and actually, it's kind of crazy because. I really wasn't considering um coming to A and T. I wasn't at all, actually. Um, I was I was trying to get into Jacksonville State because it was you know right up the street from where I, where I live at. Okay. Um, and I see that they lineage to you know getting guys to the NFL. Right. And so one night I just prayed like I don't know if like I'm making the wrong decision, but the A and T coach Coach Howard he stayed on me, he always texted me, always man, come on man, A and T, A and T, A and T. So one night I just prayed because I was going to sign with Jacksonville State the next day. Mm. They called me and said, well, we bring him in to safety from high school. So we don't want you no more, basically. <laughs> so uh, yeah. anyway, I started looking around again and I just prayed. And that night, something just told me, man, just, just go to, a, just go to uh, A&T. If you're special enough, you can make it. And, that, and that's just how I kind of took it and rolled with it. I feel like if you're special, they'll find you. So... That's how I ended up here, and I feel like it's the best decision that I made. Is that is that how that 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 transfer portal kind of works? Is it is it like you know people making promises and then it might take some stuff back? I mean, how you hear about the transfer transfer portal? But like, how hectic is that for a player to navigate through? Well, I mean, it's not hard at all. If you go to compliance, if you want to transfer, you let them. They put your name in the portal. Um, with my situation, it was kind of new. My coach at the time, Will Mushin, he he didn't he didn't like the idea of me being in the portal and being on the team. So I had to leave the team. Or basically oh. I was kicked off the team. I came back to my locker, everything was out of my locker. So it is what it is when it comes to that. It, it, well, South Carolina has almost had almost like a, a pipeline to AT over the last couple of years. We had uh, another one of star players for us, uh, Antoine Wilder. Uh, on our side, we call him the headless horseman because in his first game at AT, he lost his helmet and he was still making plays. So we called him the, he the headless horseman. But uh, Wilder, he came from South Carolina, I believe. And then uh, I think Stephen Davis. Uh, no, uh, and, Jamar and Jamari Smith. And Jamar yeah, Jamari Smith, too. So, so, so did, you, did you know about that, that, that pathway to AT from those guys, or was, was it all new to you? Um, it kind of was new to me because, you know, when, like, like I said, when Jamari transferred, I was a freshman. When Torrin transferred, I was a sophomore. So I was still young. I still felt like I wasn't even thinking about transferring at the time. You know, so I, I really didn't get into it, talk to them too much about it before I came here. It kind of was just a decision that I made, prayed about, and put my head down, came here, worked hard, and so far it's working out. Gotcha, gotcha. And so um, what, what was the biggest difference, would you say, from a Power 5, program to a division one H H HBCU. So I mean I right, still think I, st I still think AT is the the, the the creme de la creme, but it's still it's probably a big difference from a power five, right? What you mean? Like in what in what in what way? Uh, like as far as just the overall, I mean, I mean for everything as far as the, the program, the, the 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 type of environment, it, I mean I know football is football, but oh, well, let me ask you that. Was there a difference from coming from a power five to AT? Did you did you right. did you still figure anything? Well, I mean, it's 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 the difference definitely, but I mean, as far as the speed, it's not really too much of a difference here because I feel like we got guys that can run and just as fast as anybody in the country. We got a real fast team, but it's definitely some differences. Right. And um so this season, give me give me a little bit of update cuz I know <laughs> we um we, we had you mostly in the slot, but you you lined up outside. Now, uh, Elijah Bell, one of the most celebrated receivers in the anti history, he, he's gone, he's graduated. Um, do you see yourself taking over his kind of like number one receiver role? Or have they told you what, what they see, what they see you primarily doing this year? Oh, definitely, definitely. Um, I feel like definitely that's my role to fill, you know, um, and I think I'll do a pretty good job at it, you know. Right. And so, I mean, I think from my 
untrained eye, your main your major attributes are your, your route running. I, I think I think your speed is great, but it seems like you can just change direction and find pockets in the zone better than anybody you know I've seen in recent memory. Um, would you would you agree with that statement? Is that, is that something you kind of work on and, and, and take pride in? Um, I definitely take pride in route running. Um, I I try to always stay quarterback friendly with it. Um, try to make the throw most of the time as easy as possible for him. Like, and I just try to um make sure that he can always see me if he's in trouble. So, right, right. For that, it's pretty much just a feel when it comes to route running. You can work on it, but it's it's kind of more of a game time feel or how they play it, how this guy counters what you do. It's a lot that go into the route running. Well, what about uh, as far as your, your blocking too? I know your toughness is something that also gets overlooked. I remember the uh, Bethune Cookman game. That was a a, a a swing pass to uh, Baker. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. You you on the outside and you locked your corner back up. I mean, you could have had a, like an hour long conversation with this guy if you wanted to. Man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he wasn't going nowhere, and uh, you allowed Baker to get that sideline and, and score a touchdown. So, so obviously, you take pride in your blocking too, right? Yes, sir. I mean, that's that's the effort thing. That's the effort thing. Like, I feel like definitely if I can get my hands on you, then I gotta win the rep. Because, like I said, it's an effort thing. It's a mindset. So, yeah, that was one of my favorite plays this season. Right, and the guy who threw that touchdown pass, Jalen Fowler, is um, yes, act he's actually going to be the number one guy, QB one, um, this upcoming season. And that's going to be his first kind of like starting role. How has he been looking at camp and what type of chemistry have you been able to build with him so far? Um, he's been looking real good. Um, he's definitely like a guy that I think um, the world going to be on notice about after this year as well. You know, I think he's a guy that can make every throw. Um, and as the season go on, people will start to see how the chemistry connects. You know, I think it's going to be a real good year with him at, back behind quarterback. He, he knows the offense. He knows all the plays, like, better than anybody. So that's the start. Like, he know exactly what's going on. He got all the talent. He waited his turn. Now it's his turn. I think he ready for it. Gotcha. You know, when I was doing some research prior to this, you know, getting on, on the phone with you and um, on, on the call with you, and I, 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 I was just doing some YouTube research, and I saw another Corey, uh, <laughs> Corey Banks. <laughs> I guess that's Corey Banks Sr., and it was, I guess it's your dad, right? And he was yeah, a, my dad. he was a prolific football player in his day. He played at Mississippi State. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he played in the NFL and the CFL, right? Yes, sir. So, man, that was, that's actually, if you go search now, that's a YouTube video of your dad picking off, he was a cornerback. He was, he picked off Eli Manning. I, yeah, I, think I was, it was like a, that game. You had that game. That was, that's yeah. the craziest thing. So that was only, that wasn't that long ago. Uh, what was nah, it like? It what was it like? It what was it like growing up with you know having a dad who was a top fight football player in his own right? I mean, it definitely. Well, actually, my dad, man, my dad, he wasn't the type of dad that always came home and was on football. But with me personally, because he saw that I had the same love for him as the game, it was a little different growing up with somebody that actually know the game. So certain excuses you can't have, like. Bottom line, like my dad, he was like growing up with a pro in the house, like it's definitely helpful. Like your learning curve is a lot different because just being around somebody who really do this for a living, like so it definitely was different growing up with him in the house, I could say. But I don't know what it's like to not grow up with him in the house. So does he come to all your games thing. now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's all he's at all the games. Y'all probably don't see him because he's just one of those way that he, he ain't gonna show his face too much. Um, he gonna be there though. He had all the games. Gotcha. And also, as far as your your, your background, you came from a pretty uh, 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 well known high school, Sandy yeah. Creek in Georgia. And that's I, I just, just doing research. That's that was actually the same high school as Calvin Johnson, who yes, just sir. got recently inducted to the NFL Hall of Fame. So so I mean, when you walk in the hallways, are, are there like signs of Calvin Johnson? Like, is his jersey like in the in the locker room uh, and all that kind of stuff? Actually, it's not. Really? Y'all got to get on that, man. Get... <laughs> I mean, I, I, think, I, think, I, think, I think Sandy Creek on it, though. I think yeah. they on it, actually. But actually, just walking through the hallway, no. But that's because of the – Sandy Creek is known for ball players, athletes. You know, we got an Olympic gold medalist that went there, um, Christian Taylor. Oh, okay. Triple jumper back – yeah. So, I mean, 
I'm pretty sure one day they'll get those guys some statues or whatever for their accomplishments, but I don't know why we don't got it yet. But when I was there, I know he would get us cleats every year and he'll do a camp at Sandy Creek. So I don't ran into him a couple times. Gotcha. Well, you know, um, as, as anti fans, man, we're just so th thankful that you made the decision to come here and um, just hit the ground running and just, just doing what you do. Uh, we're expecting major big things out of you this year. Uh, that Celebration Bowl was probably your national coming out party, I would say, against Alcorn State. You know, I don't know if you've been aware, but over the last couple of years, they've been doing like an anti-bullying campaign. And um, you might not get that memo because there was a one play in the Celebration Bowl, you put this Alcorn State defensive back, <laughs> you know, you put him in a meme almost. He was, I mean, it was, it was, it was, I, I felt bad yeah. for the kids, you know. Do you, you, do you remember that play? Can you describe what was going on? Because you had him like in a blender. He was going this way, that way. He was, it was a, a long touchdown pass. If, if, if you can, go take us back to that, that, that moment. Well, actually, um, the play before that could have been a long touchdown pass, too. They blitzed everybody, and I was just wide open. So that ended up making us – I think that made it down like second down and 16. Um, so the next play, we came out, we ran that play. Um, I had I had hit it earlier in the game, right before the half. We came back to it because they just wasn't stopping me. But this time they had the linebacker on me. So I knew once I got my eyes to the sideline quick, he was going to turn and bite on me. So I kind of had it already set up in my head when I seen he was running to the flats. All I got to do is show my eyes and he going to take off. So I showed my eyes. Took off running the ball, which is beautiful as it can be. And then the rest of it happened so fast, I can't even tell you how it went. I seen him, tried to get in his blind spot, he turned his back to me. So I got in his blind spot again. And that, tried that, to was, away. that was his first that mistake. When, when he turned his back to you, that was his first mistake. It was over at that point. It yeah, was, he, uh, it, yeah, once he did, that I already knew. Yeah, it was ESPN top 10 highlight at, at that point. So, hey, yeah. what was it like? as a receiver when your quarterback Khalil Carter is in a zone like that because it, it seemed to me he could not miss if there was ever a time to be on your a game that was a perfect opportunity and I mean he was just throwing darts and dimes all game long what was it like to see your teammate just in that type of zone Man, it was beautiful I, I really can't like I don't think I ever played in a football game that fun and I've been playing football since four years old but that game was like Super fun, everybody making plays, everybody making big plays at that. Um, and and just to see him come out there and go out with a bang like that in his last college game with, with his story and everything he'd been through, it, it was it was it was it was amazing, honestly. He threw the ball like top tier. He made great plays. And, and that was the actually the last game ANT has played um since this whole pandemic is in shutdown. Uh it happened to be the the 2019 Celebration Bowl for the HBCU National Championship. And then in that time period since then, in off season, the announcement was made that A&T was going to be changing conferences to the Big South. As a player, uh, how, how did you view that move? And, and what do you think about this, the, the promise that a new conference might uh, provide? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. It don't matter to me or the team. We just put the ball down, let's play. It don't matter who on the schedule, what time we play on, where at. We just ready to play. Like that's the, that's basically the Aggie way. Yeah. So, so are you worried about not having like the bands and everything in the background? Is, that, is there any like that kind of stuff? You know, something that you notice as as a player? That's that's all just. just... I mean, when we play at home. We are gonna have our band. So. Right. Right. At the end of the day, we go to somebody else's stadium. It's we pretty much they rule. So. That that. I love our band. I love everybody else's band, but that ain't football. So that don't it don't worry me at all. We out there to play football. So the band and all that, that ain't our job to worry about that. Our job is to go out there and whoever we playing against dominate them. That, yeah. That's that's kind of how we try to go about business. I got you. Well, we're looking forward to it. I know also before you leave, um, you have a new wide receiver coach at ANT. Talk a little bit yeah. about him. Introduce him. Who, who what's what's his name? And I guess what, <laughs> How has right. it been working with him so far? Okay, I'll give you the rundown on him. Um, this this coach Nate Poole, um, a, a coach man with a with a lot of experience playing football for Wayne, and man, a really good coach. And, you know, coaching within the offense, but coaching the stuff that can help us at next levels. 
you know, um, because he actually played in the NFL for five years, played at Marshall. Um, well, man, he's a great coach, though, man. Always got the same energy every day, man. Always high energy. Um, and he, he get the best out of all his players. He know he know how to get the best out of every player in the receiver room. So as far as Coach Poole goes, um, well, one thing on, on as the fans on our site, we we kind of had a, a a nickname for the for the wide receivers uh, because of the the, the amount you. of jump ball you because of all the acrobatic plays that you guys made over years. It really started um, with a guy probably named um, Denzel Keys. Yeah, he, number he was, one. Yeah, he was the first kind of high flyer jump ball fade route guy, and then uh -huh. of course Elijah Bell the Great. Um, he he and uh, Zach Leslie took that to the next level. It's like almost every week they were going up, mossing somebody, and just yeah. you know <laughs> getting get fade routes. Uh, and then, like I say, last year, man, you you joined the party, and I mean, you you got some you got some hops too. But as far as that whole the whole um, that, that that whole that 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 style of play, is that something that we can expect to continue, or is? Right. Well, I mean, of course, you know, jump ball, you that's that just come from making plays on the ball. We're gonna do that every year. Um, those guys that they had back then were a little bigger than what we are now, you know. So we 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 really run by you now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we gonna run by you now. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so we we got a pretty fast court, but we can jump too. We can go up and get the ball. So yeah, we definitely gonna keep the jump ball you thing going. I mean, we get those chances to go out there and make plays on the 50-50 ball. I, I like us. So we definitely gonna keep that going. Okay. But okay. run by you is, is definitely a name we need to start going by too. I like that. And that's that's kind of clever. Usually players have the worst nicknames, right? But that's that's yeah. one that's what I might actually kind of you know uh champion myself. And so mm -hmm. do you have a, a personal nickname? Because I don't know if you know, but I've been one of the guys in the uh, ANT fan base. I've always labeled guys, give them nicknames. And if you look at their stats, they've gone up like 90%. If I give you a nickname, you have like all me act, all, all American yeah. year. So, yeah. so, so do you have one or do you need one from me? Do you have a nickname that you go by? I mean, they just call me two. They just two. call me by my jersey number. Dudes okay. two, KB. Okay. But I mean, if you got a nickname, that's cool. I, I definitely love to see my stats go up by 90%. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> hey, trust me, there's no problem if I give you a nickname. Actually, we, we might actually use a uh, do a poll on the, on the website, on the fan forum. We might do okay. a poll, and, and the best nickname, we'll see, we'll present it to you, see if you want to adopt it for the season. Is that, is that cool? That's cool, man. The nickname up to you, man. Okay, up okay, you. okay, okay. So last, I know you got, I know you got a, a, a scrimmage in a little bit. Um, what can we expect from... Um, Corey Banks and the ANT offense and the whole ANT program 2021. Give, give us a little bit of a preview of what we can expect in a couple of weeks. Um, for one, man, we got a lot of new faces. Um, because you know, since Bell left, we got a lot of new faces um in the receiver room. So I think from my standpoint, I think that what you would expect out of me is leadership, a lot of big playmaking, um and and, and just um I don't know the word I want to use, but a lot of fight, I guess. I guess that's what you would say, like, real com competitive. You're going to see a lot of competitors out of me. And far as for the team, man, I think once we get clicking and going, man, I don't think that it's a team that can really just line up, play for play, and stop us. Once we gel and, you know, get those couple games under our belts, I don't think there's nobody that, that, that can line up in front of us and stop us play for play. But then again, we got to go out there and show it, so. But I think y'all should expect a lot of big plays, um, a lot of wins, and, and we're just going to get back to playing Aggie football. Hey, bro. Nothing new, man. Nothing new. We're, gonna, we're trying to pick up. We're trying to pick up where we left off at, man. MEAC, it don't matter where we at. MEAC, it don't matter the conference. Put the ball down. Let's play. That's our motto. That is music to my ears, man. You don't know how how much I'm anticipating, looking forward to this season. Um, you and – my guy uh, Jalen and all the guys on defense. I know, I know y'all gonna turn up, um, but um, I know. Let me let me let you go. I don't want to keep you too too long today, but uh, you know, uh, keep going to the website and checking out uh, bluedeathvalley.com. Everybody, our fan forum is there. We're gonna be talking about uh, Corey Banks and and the team. Um, and uh, until then, until next week, bluedeathvalley.com for Corey Banks, the most underrated, slept on. Um, soon to be household name wide receiver in the, in the country. I'm Samaj Marsh, and once again, we will see you later.
Thanks. Thanks for having me.